Healing political division in the U.S. is on the top of U.S. President Joe Biden's agenda, especially after pro-Trump protesters stormed the U.S. Capitol last month. Given Trump received over 74 million votes, how daunting is Biden's task to unite Americans? How will he bring the two sides together? And how might political instability in the country impact countries beyond U.S. borders? I'm joined by Professor Huang Ya Sheng from MIT's Sloan School of Management, who predicted the U.S. election results. Professor Huang, thank you very much for joining us. You predicted two years ago, after the U.S. midterm elections, that uh, President Trump's chance to secure a second term was slim. Based on what did you make that conclusion? Did you also predict that he would actually lose to Joe Biden? Well, I didn't make any prediction about Joe Biden because I didn't know who was going to run against Trump. What I predicted was that the turnout by the Democratic Party was going to be very high. And that turned out to be right. Usually in the past uh, presidential elections, Democrats, when they have very large turnout, they tend to win the elections. Uh, and this is true this time around. So it was really using that, um, uh, that data, that piece of data that I predicted that uh, Democrats would uh, win the election. Obviously, lots of things happened since 2018. Mm -hmm. The pandemic, uh, for example, the racial riots uh, in the country, um, and also the degree of um, divisiveness has increased even from that year. So those are the things that I couldn't uh, predict. Mm -hmm. So seeing what has happened and all of these things that you've, you've just mentioned, how would you describe the moment the United States is standing at this moment in terms of uh, its domestic politics? Some people are saying it's a weight lifted. Obviously, you know what, we, what they're talking about, I believe. Uh, how would you describe it? I think. I'm cautiously optimistic about the Biden administration trying to restore normalcy to American politics and uh, try to create uh, unity among uh, Americans. But there's no question in the past four years, because America had a very divisive president and uh, the country is uh, sliding toward not civil war, but civil tensions and conflicts. And I would describe as a civilizational clash that is happening in the United States. The civilization here is not religion. It is really more fundamentally about what kind of society what kind of uh, uh, political system that uh, people would support and embrace. And the evidence is very clear. There are Americans who support constitutional democracy, but there are many, many Americans who support uh, authoritarian system. And those Americans who supported authoritarian system uh, supported Trump. Right? So that's a big difference between two Americas. And that's something that we didn't really know that it could be so serious. Because the conventional wisdom is Americans, they all share this idea of democracy, apple pie. That's, not, that's actually not true. There are many, many Americans who don't buy into that consti constitutional vision about the country. Wow, it is something very, very interesting that you just mentioned, for instance, that there is this civilizational conflict within the society of the United States, um, and that you are calling the Trump supporters those who are after an authoritarian style of, uh, of government, of society. Uh, what exactly people would challenge are the basis of your claim? Well, I have written about this for the last four years uh, on my WeChat uh, public blog. I think the fundamental difference is the, the value difference. 
about about democracy, about politics. Look at the way that Democrats handled their loss uh, of Hillary Clinton in 2016. Democrats actually won the popular vote. They lost the electoral college uh, vote. They didn't like it. I didn't like it. Um, and, um, and also, Democrats lost the electoral a college uh, vote in, in 2000. But that's the way the system is. The fundamental value of democracy is you win some, you lose some. As long as you accept the rules of the game, even though the rules of the game can be unfair, but before you fix the rules of the game, you accept the rules of the game as they are. Right? That's what Democrats decided to accept. They protested, they demonstrated, but pretty much that's, that's, that's all they did. Look at how Republicans this time around reacted to the loss of uh, Donald Trump, both in the Electoral College as well as in the popular, uh, popular election. They stormed into the Capitol Hill, right? They used violence uh, to try to change the, the vote. They first tried the legal mechanism. Even though the legal mechanism didn't work out, they tried these uh, other uh, tactics. They spread rumors, they spread misinformation, and they spread outright lies. Okay. That's, the, that's the value difference between one part of America that accepts their loss, right? In 2000, uh, Al Gore um, lost to George W. Bush. And it was really a Supreme Court decision. And he was the vice president then. He accepted the loss. So a fundamental part of the democracy is not just that you vote, but you also accept the election, even if you are on the losing side. And it's very clear this time around, there are many, many Americans who don't accept the basic rule of democracy. The opinion poll shows that um, two thirds of the Republicans still do not accept the loss of uh, Donald Trump in the uh, in the election. Two thirds. Um, we're talking. We're not talking about just a small number of people. Mm. We're talking about a, a large number of people. So that's why I say this is a civilizational clash. Uh, it, it is not a small difference. It's a big difference. Well, you also predicted back in 2018 that the violence within America is going to continue to flare. Um, yeah. So is that also based on what you just said, um, how you see the future um, going forward, that the, the kind of tension, the kind of uh, violence potentially will continue to flare? And what kind of challenge does that inflict on the Biden administration? Yeah, so, so let me say uh, two things. One is that Another fundamental difference is about the role of reason vis-a-vis -vis the role of violence in a society. There are Americans who believe in science, believe in reason, believe in logic, and there are other Americans who believe in violence, right? Mm -hmm. and, and those Americans who believe in violence, we, we know what they did. They stormed into the Capitol building, they brought weapons, and they, in fact, try to physically harm uh, Nancy Pelosi and, um, and the Vice President uh, uh, Pence. In terms of the future, uh, I, feel, I feel really, really concerned uh, about the flare of violence in this country. America is already a very violent society. If you look at statistics, gun violence in this country is much higher than, um, than violence, homicide uh, rate uh, in Europe, in Japan, in Asia. And some of the states in America have homicide rates closer to Latin America, right? So there is already substantial level mm -hmm. of violence in this country. What has happened in the last four years 
is the combination of violence with politics. And that's a very lethal combination. Previously, the violence is almost random, you know, shooting at a school, shooting at a shopping mall. Mm -hmm. My prediction is that the right-wing extremists from now on are probably going to become a political organization using violence as the main weapon of their political participation. Professor Huang, let me ask you this question. Um, I think a lot of people would say, uh, would argue that there is a difference between, uh, in values between the Democrats and uh, the, the Republicans. But uh, how can you uh, reassure them that you do not come from a biased position? Because obviously you seem to stand on the, on the, on the perspective of the, re of the Democrats more. And from your past writings, you have also been very critical of um, of conservatives, of uh, Republicans, in the way how they're more inclined to listen to others and just believe it, it, it is true. So how can you assure other people that you do come from an independent and non-biased position where you're making these predictions and, uh, and qualifications of, uh, of the conservative forces? Well, I mean, the, the best way to check against any bias is using data. Who is using violence more? Right? I think the evidence is very clear. One part of America uses violence more than the other part of the America. And the part that uses violence more tends to be Republican. So all the, this is not biased. And, and, and there's nothing about Democratic Party that is intrinsically superior to Republican Party. For me as an academic, uh, I don't think it's fair to say I'm biased. I'm biased in favor of data and facts. If you look at the data, right, 50 states in America, which states have higher homicide, uh, homicidal rates? Which states have lower homicidal rates? The evidence is super clear. The states run by the Republicans have higher homicidal rates, right? I look at that data, and then I look at the policies of the Republican Party, which is to defend the gun rights rather than imposing reasonable controls on, on guns. It doesn't really take a lot of uh, brain power to make the connections between not regulating guns and the gun violence. How do you look at, very briefly, the implications for America's foreign policy based on the kind of divisiveness that's expected to grow in the next four years? Briefly, please. Yeah, so I, I think there I have some hope um, because usually foreign policy is the prerogative of the White House. And now we have a White House run by, uh, by President uh, Biden. For example, on China, uh, policy, I believe Biden is going to repair a lot of the damage that was done to the relationship. I don't believe that Biden is going to go back to Obama or to George W. Bush or to uh, uh, Clinton. But I think on a number of areas, he's going to seek cooperation right. with China on global warming, on public health, on Iran, on North Korea. It's going to be a more uh, a reasonable approach as compared with Trump administration. Yeah, we're certainly hoping that things will de-escalate because the situation has really taken a free fall over the past few years. Many thanks to Professor Huang Yasheng from the Sloan School of Management of MIT.